And there's a fruit fly there if you really squint your eyes. Let's zoom in on this bottom part of the section and look at the largest robot first. It's a four centimeter long wing and 200 micron thickness, has a resonant frequency of 151 hertz. An excess power of 16 watts, but most of the power is coming from the battery. Not very much from solar power on this size scale. So while it can fly very fast, it can't do it for very long. It quickly burns up all of its power and then has to stop and recharge. So over long time periods, it only flies at a velocity of about 8 centimeters a second on average. Looking at the opposite size uh, end of the size spectrum here, the smallest robot is about the same size as a fruit fly. A little bit shorter wings, actually. Length of 1.3 millimeters, and we're ending up with 0.4 milligram mass. This robot has a fair bit of solar power for the amount of power that it's needing, but unfortunately, on this small size scale, we're into the Reynolds number regime where flight's not as optimal as it was at larger Reynolds numbers. So things start to drop off, and again, it can't, uh, it can't operate for a huge amount of its total time. It has to stop and recharge quite frequently. So the burst velocity, 3.5 meters a second, but the travel velocity, the average velocity over long periods of time, only half a meter per second. You can get 1,800 robots from a single 4-inch wafer with this design, though. The balanced one, somewhere in the middle, this is where we can get the best of both worlds. We have the optimum region for flight, and we're not scaled up so much that the solar power is started to lose. So for this design, we're actually in a range where the solar power is larger than the power required for flight. This is not the power outside in, uh, in Nevada in the middle of the sun, by the way. This is assuming 25 watts per square meter solar power. So that's like an indoor office lighting kind of range. This one has an average velocity of 2 meters per second, and you can still get 41 robots per 4-inch wafer. Okay, that's pretty impressive. So now the question is not so much, well, does this lead to interesting robots? It's more, does it actually work? I mean, come on, Matt, is this a six, are you really pulling our leg here? What's going on? Is this, a, is, is this theory correct? So let's test it. To test it, we need to build some of these wings and say, do these produce the same force that we're thinking? Do they actually flap in this 